Well, hi, good morning. It's uh, May 1st, and I'm going to do a short video on this fantastic half radio receiver here, the Hammerland HC10. Just acquired this a short time ago and tried it the other night in here, and uh, it was a Hummer, a big Hummer. So I've replaced or augmented, I actually uh, replaced the uh, uh, filter capacitors in the power supply and I'm going to give it a go here. This is a very interesting uh, radio. This radio has no front end. It's dependent upon the front end of some other radio, any other radio, pretty well. Um, what it does is it has an input on the back for uh, this cord's plugged into. This input would connect to the last IF amplifier in a radio in uh, some uh, expensive communications uh, receivers, there's actually a uh, terminal on the back uh, which which has the IF output on it. Um, so that I IF output from the first radio is fed into here. From here it continues through this right to the speaker. So this thing requires the front end of another radio. This will not tune anything uh, uh, antenna-wise. So with the IF signal coming in, that's at 455 kilohertz. This has to be tuned very carefully to 455 kilohertz, and the, and the radio itself has to have an IF that's operating at 455 kilohertz. If not, everything has to be tuned up to the exact IF frequency of the uh, of the radio that you have this connected to. Then uh, the signal comes in here. It's converted down to 90 kilocycles from the 455. It then runs through a series of IF amplifiers. You can see all the stuff here. Uh, runs through a series of IF amplifiers, gets detected, amplified, and sent out to the speaker. I have a speaker connected to this. For, for the input, since I, I, I don't want to fool with that too much, this is all I've got. Just, just, just clipped into, or uh, plugged into the input to this. And so this is acting a little bit like an antenna. And I have this coil sitting here, and I'm just throwing this on top in hopes a little bit of signal will leak into the wire, and this thing is sensitive enough to react to it. I have my signal generator running back here. You can't see the number, but it's 465 here. Why not 455? <coughs> Good idea. Let's put it at 455. Okay. So I already know this is actually tuned at 465, but we'll start there. Uh, when I tried this last night, uh, it was full of uh, crackles, and I think it was just because the, the tubes um, were not set in their socket, so I've been wiggling them around to get them set firmly into their sockets here. It's a little 6AL5 there. Okay, let's try it again, and we'll see what happens. This is, so I'll just go over the controls here, and I, I don't understand these 100% yet. Top corner here is a slot frequency, and so this is a, uh, a uh, um, notch filter, or they're calling it a slot. A notch filter, you can move across the signal you're listening to and maybe knock out uh, some heterodyne tone or something of that sort. We're going to leave it up here. This is a setting for AM or CW SSB. Apparently, AM guys love this thing because of its uh, the way it works on uh, what's that? on uh, single sideband. This is a passband tuning. 
So I believe you can you can kind of move the tuning into either the upper band or the lower side side band. I think that's what that's doing. ABC control, slow, medium, fast. Slot depth, so that notch filter you can control how deep the notch is by, by turning this, which is quite, quite interesting. This is the turn it on and turn up and down the audio. Here it has such selectivity, the three settings. When it's on the three, three, it's set to three right now, it's actually six all together, or three on the side, six all together. Sidebands, so this would be both sidebands, or, or AM and the lower upper. Uh, it has a built-in uh, BFO. Um, where, where, where do you set the BFO level? This looks like frequency. Why can you not? Oh, I guess when you when you flip it up to CW or single sideband, it automatically kicks in a BFO, and then this is adjusting the BFO a little bit. As uh, a noise limiter, it also doubles as a squelch control, which is a little bit unusual. So what I'm hoping to do with it, and, and nothing more than this, pick up the signal coming out of my signal generator at 455 or wherever and hear it come out the speaker on this without a pile of crackles and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go. I can turn it on here. I have it running through dim bulbs because uh, I had done work on it yesterday. But, uh, but I think it's okay. Okay, so I'm going to run it at uh, 107 volts right now. speaker I have it plugged into is a small one way up on my uh, wall up this way. And I, I can't guarantee you it's easy. I can't guarantee it's even going to work. Okay, we're 105 volts on it. That's enough to make it work, I would think. I can hear the speaker. You probably can too. Just a little bit of static. Okay, now so what I'm going to do, that's full volume too. I'm going to tune the signal generator across. Well, I'm going to tune it up and down a bit and we'll find out that this isn't actually tuned to 455. It's tuned to something else. There we are. Now, I have to imagine I'm putting in a not at all the appropriate signal into this. I'm putting in, well, it's just being picked up by, a, well, it's pretty, it's pretty sensitive. I don't need to even have this near the, uh, it, it, it does help, it's near the coil. There we are. Slot depth. Don't know what I'm expecting here. Okay, you can hear the uh, dirt in the controls, passband tuning. Selectivity. Okay, should have left that one alone. There we go. Side bands. Another one. I, uh oh. I can hear the AVC uh, really knock it out there. And the last one is a noise limiter and squelch. There it is. So, if you marry this up with a high quality radio, like let's say another Hammerland, like let's say the Hammerland SP600, which I think is one of the top of the line radios they produced back in the 50s, then you would have um, in that radio a couple stages of RF. 
I think three stages of IF and then there's an IF output on the back of that radio which will go into this one which will then convert it to 90 run it through three more stages of IF tuning de uh, detect it and then amplify it for the uh, speaker that's an awful lot of I guess signal sharpening is kind of what I would think of um, so it's a fantastic actor on very narrow band things like Morse code. Morse code, you have very narrow band. So you're excluding all the other nonsense that's in, you know, out in the uh, in the ether. You're just listening to this little tiny slice where someone's sending you some Morse code. So in that case, you can kind of uh, avoid all the uh, noise that might be out there and focus way in on the signal probably do the very same thing with uh, uh, other narrowband uh, transmissions so looking forward to, to, to using it but uh, that's it for today for here I gotta get back to the radio I'm actually fixing but uh, since I had this on my bench I thought I'd make this little video and just show you this really cool thing Hammerlin HC 10 I didn't even know it existed now I have one fantastic thanks for watching